even a tiny bit of 19 nors are going to keep you shut down for months, not just, you know, oh, two weeks and then I can start my PCT. What's up guys, Derek, moreplaysmoreneats.com. Today I wanted to do a quick video on the fact that is commonly overlooked about um, suppressive compounds and the kind of illogical PCT practices that have been passed through the grapevine in this community for years and years as gospel, but are in fact kind of ridiculous when you actually look at it further. So basically, in general, it's going to take five half-lives for a compound to clear your system to a point where it is not suppressing your HPTA anymore. And this is not even considering 19 nor testosterone or its derivatives of that that are going to be suppressive even at minuscule dosages for months on end. And at the end of the day, the thing that you know people often talk about when they talk about, oh, time on, time off, this, that, the standard kind of approach that even a lot of guys that are experienced will take is they'll do, you know, like an off season where they use like pretty heavy use to try and gain as much muscle as possible. Then they'll have a contest prep where they like really push the envelope and throw in the DHT derivatives. They throw in the list, they throw in the that, they throw in a diuretic, they throw in the whatever. They throw in like a, the kitchen sink of things at themselves to achieve a cosmetic dry look that would otherwise not be something, you know, that's worth pursuing in the off season, obviously, where you're just trying to pursue contractile tissue gain. So most people have the highest dosages. They go from, you know, relatively moderate dosages, you know, whatever you consider moderate, I guess it's going to differ person to person. But anyway, off season, like moderate use to starting contest prep, and it starts to sort of get a bit more aggressive towards the end where more um, hardening agents are thrown in and things that increase oxidative stress, things that inhibit estrogen receptors, things that inhibit aromatization, things that are going to increase neuro and cardiotoxicity, things that are just going to put a massive burden on your system in general. And then most people, they're going to have a three month to six month at most typically sort of like clean out where they stop everything and then get healthy again. And it's like, or like go natural is what they would just think they're doing, but often they, it's not the case. The thing is, is when people progress, typically you, you know, if you have a guy who's not way too impatient, he's going to start with something like testosterone only, which is a very common first cycle, which you are going to be able to start your PCT within a reasonable time frame after discontinuation, even if it's an anthate or cypionate ester. But the thing people don't take into account is, Again, five half-lives before you can even introduce serms that are going to make a difference in terms of stimulating and helping you restore your endogenous testosterone production. So let's just say you follow the traditional bro model of you stop your, you know, whatever your testosterone and anthe, and then two weeks later, you start your PCT. You're not going to be at a point if you were just on 500 megs of test where two weeks later, you're ready for those drugs to be introduced into your system to make a difference. Like you have to wait for the hormone to fully clear at least an amount that is going to not, like you have to consider the fact here that even small dosages of steroids, regardless, of, like if you've seen those clinical studies where you're having like injecting 25 to 50 milligrams of testosterone and people are losing muscle versus the dose response of 125, 300, 600 milligrams, those guys gain muscle. The reason for that is because you only produce a certain amount of testosterone and even if you're injecting an exogenous source, but it's like the same amount you naturally produce or like slightly le less than that, you're still going to shut down your HPTA so you can actually end up injecting less testosterone than you would have otherwise naturally produced. So this is why in that dose response study, you have people who are having a negative you know, response muscle tissue wise to exogenous testosterone use because you're going to get the same level of shutdown above and beyond the threshold, tiny amount of testosterone that shuts you down, regardless of what your dosage is above that. So this is what you have to consider is you, until you get to that amount where you've cleared enough hormone out of your system that it's no longer suppressive, nothing you do PCT wise is going to make a difference. And you're just adding layers of oxidative stress to your body for no reason whatsoever. So you have a lot of guys starting their PCT two weeks later when they're not ready to. So they're throwing drugs at themselves 
and it's not helping. And then, you know, they take, oh, I did my PCT, you know, two weeks off, then I do like a f three to four week PCT, and then I take like four weeks off, and then I'm hopping back on again. And it's like reality, in reality, even if you just did testosterone and anthate only, you're barely in a position where you've, you know, like actually started to recover properly. It's going to be a lot quicker than these other, you know, drug combinations that people are going to be doing after their first cycle, which I'm going to delve into now. But I'm just saying, even in that context, most people aren't giving themselves an opportunity to recover properly. And it takes longer for these hormones to clear than most assume. And you have to keep in mind, too, most people aren't using short esters. They're using long esters, which there's nothing wrong with long esters. But you have to understand the pharmacokinetics here. And the fact that it's going to take longer to clear your system for those five half lives to finish and for you to reach a level whereby you can even think about trying to enhance endogenous androgen production or, you know, support it, I should say. Or even if you weren't doing a PCT for your body to, you know, kickstart and start doing it itself, which is regardless, ultimately what you're waiting for at the end of the day. So people starting their PCTs within, you know, like seven to 14 days, it just like is nonsensical in almost all situations when you're using long esters and then you get into the situation where most guys on their second or third cycle are going to start looking at 19 nors. You have guys using Trenbolone in their teens now. It's insane. And you have people using DECA very early. The thing you have to consider with these drugs is they're suppressive at dosages much lower than testosterone or DHT derivatives. You're going to stay suppressed far longer after taking DECA than you are testosterone only. So, or, you know, testosterone plus provirin or something like that. So if you take nandrolone decanoate, if you actually look at the charting showing the pharmacokinetics as well as showing the endogenous testosterone levels in response to even just like one shot of DECA, DECA takes around 20 weeks to even start recovering natural endogenous production. And the same would apply for you know, like a 19 nor like Trenbolone. And that's decanoate. Like even if you have phenylpropanate, you're still, you know, the the clearance time between the actual ester, you know, sure, it's, it's lower, but the actual amount of suppressive hormone in the body, even a tiny bit of 19 nors are going to keep you shut down for months, not just, you know, oh, two weeks and then I can start my PCT. Like if you take Trenbolone and Anthe or you take Nandrolone decanoate, which is, Something a lot, even or trenase or whatever, this is something a lot of people do. Let's just go with long esters, assuming for now, because that's, you know, typically the approach most people take. Let's say you take your two weeks off after, then you start, which a lot of people coming off contest preps are going to be heavy using trend balloon or people coming off their, you know, most people are going to bulk in the winter and then cut in the summer, which is often going to involve either DECA in the winter or trend balloon in the summer, regardless if you're competing or not. Everyone's doing this. That is like, like hardcore about like juicing their brains out right now, including teens who are like just getting into this and are half hazardly using Trenbolone already um, within like their first couple cycles. Anyways, so like once you take your, you know, your bro science like two weeks off, now you're at a point where you think you can start your PCT, but when in reality your body is not even ready to start, it's still suppressed. There's still suppressive amounts of hormones in your body that are not going to, regardless of what you do, you're not going to recover. You can try and artificially stimulate whatever you want. You can throw serums at it. You can do whatever you want. It's not going to make a difference until you've allowed your body to clear the hormone out of your system to a point where it's no longer suppressing your HPTA. So the fact is most people are actually just blasting and cruising and thinking they're cycling, even if they're cycling. Like you, you have a lot of guys that do blast and cruise like pretty early now. That's like a very, very common go to now as people are like you know what like i don't want to deal with like two steps forward one step back i want to just do three steps forward like every single time so they'll go to like blasting and cruising at like 20 21 years old now which you know i'm not to judge because who the fuck am i to judge in that scenario when you've seen you know my kind of content and my history and whatnot but at the end of the day, and it, mine wasn't as bad as that, but I'm just saying like, you know, in general, <laughs> from an experimental context, like there's, I've done dumb things in my past, which is largely why I'm talking about this stuff. So anyways, you have people who are like blasting and cruising in their 20s now. And um, even if they're cycling, the thing is, is most people who are cycling, no one's just doing like test only really. No one's really doing things that are not going to suppress them. And even if they're doing, they're usually doing long esters. And so if you're using like a 19 nor or something like that, and you take your two weeks off and then you start your PCT, you're not, 
you're just like further damaging your body basically because you're throwing things trying to like kickstart stuff that's not ready to start it's not going to start like whatever you do you can try and push it artificially as much as you want until that stuff is clear to the point where it's not having that negative feedback with your hpta anymore you're not going to get the recovery so in reality most people that are cycling and tell them tell you they're you know being responsible and like coming off the gear like fully it's like they're probably they're technically blasting and cruising just to like a different level than they you know would think because they have much less hormone in their system than somebody who's cruising but it's still you know a same level of stress to some extent whereby it's not you know if you're like hypogonadal it's not a healthy thing either so um anyways the takeaway from all this is basically just understand the pharmacokinetics of whatever you're going to be using and also understand that it's probably not wise to delve into 19 nors until you're prepared to deal with the very high likelihood of lifelong hrt in my opinion because these things are so suppressive that i think it's pretty unlikely that you're going to actually restore adequate function in a time frame that would you know like most people aren't going to do time on time off or like time on and then wait for full clearance of like a nandrolone decanoate or a trend balone enanthate because they're going to be suppressed for so damn long that no one wants to wait that long who's doing this stuff for bodybuilding purposes and is you know using these compounds to begin with so and the takeaway from that is basically you know be wary of the risks before you delve into very very heavily suppressive compounds like that and even if you're just using you know testosterone and dht derivatives that aren't as harsh on it be aware of the ester you're using the clearance time how long it takes for five half lives and what you know what is going to be residually left that could be suppressing you still before you start throwing drugs at your system because you may just be stressing your body unnecessarily for no reason or you may be thinking oh you're cleaning out when in reality you're still in a heavily compromised state just because you haven't considered the fact that these things are still in your system for much longer than somebody would have otherwise led you to believe on a forum that tells you that two weeks is somehow the magical predetermined time frame that clears all these hormones from your system to a point that they're no longer suppressive, which is not the case. So take from that what you will. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe. Also comment and definitely like, please do comment and like because it helps push the algorithm, get the video on the recommended for other people who you know might be interested in this stuff and haven't seen my content. Helps grow the brand. It's very much appreciated when you guys do that. It really, you know, really, really helps me out. So if you, you know, enjoy my content and want to support it, please, Please do, do do that. Subscribe, hit the notification bell. I would advise subscribing to the newsletter as well if you want to actually get articles sent to you whenever they're published. Anyone who's read my articles can attest to the fact that they are way better than my videos. And I feel like my videos are, you know, pretty damn informative as is. And they are, you know, broken down in subsections with table of contents. Everything I reference is hyperlinked for you to go delve into further yourself. If it's a clinical study I'm referencing, you can go click it and go look at it yourself for your own research. And um, just a lot of incentive to do that because the only way you're going to get sent the articles is if you're signed up to that list. So um, follow me on Instagram at moreplates underscore more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, Bitter, uh, Bitter, uh, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.